Good afternoon, everyone. We are group three, and my name is Wang Pei Yu. These are my group members. This is Zhang Penyi, and she is Li Daoyuan. Now, today we are going to talk about pre-meeting arrangements. And these are the contents we are going to present to you guys, as you can see. And these are the contents, too. Okay, now I'm going to give the floor to Penny. Hello everyone, I'm Penny. And in this part, I will discuss about the warming up. And are you familiar with interpreter? And do you know what it takes to be a good interpreter? And important. An uh, interpreter is an important role in meetings, and the interpreter's responsibility is to enable people from different countries to have a smooth discussion in meetings. So, if you want to be a good interpreter, you should pay attention to the following three points. The first, a good interpreter must never be a loss for word. As a literal meaning, uh, as a literal meaning, the this is an error that should not be made by an interpreter. It will show that you are unprofessional. So you should practice more to avoid this situation. Second, a good interpreter must be aware of the latest development in current affairs. Interpreter usually need to interpret in meeting in professional field, and the content of the meeting is likely likely to be related about um, current affair. So, so only by keeping track of the latest development in current affair that you can interpret um, more closely to what the speaker want to express. Then last but not least, a good interpreter must constantly maintain, even improve your language proficiency. We all know that the most important thing for an interpreter is his language ability. So if you want to be better than the other interpreter, you should, um, you need to be eager to learn and keep in touch with new things. And this is the end of the warming up. And then I'll continue to present the part of vocabulary. In this part, I will read the word and uh, example first. And please repeat after me. Interpreter. Interpreter. It means a person who interprets, especially one who translated speech orally. For example, I'm looking to book an interpreter for my company's meeting. I'm looking to book an interpreter for my company's meeting. Good. And next one, duration. Duration. It means the time during which something continues. For example, what is the place and duration of the meeting? What is the place and duration of the meeting? Thank you. And expertise. Expertise. It means expert knowledge in a particular field. For example, would you prefer an interpreter with a particular field of expertise? Would you prefer an interpreter with a particular field of expertise? Good. And candidates. Candidates. It means a person regarded as suitable for or likely to receive a position. For example, we have some candidates with the necessary qualifications. We have some candidates with the necessary qualifications. Thank you. And qualification. Qualification. It means a pass of the action of becoming qualified as a recognized practitioner of a profession or activity. For example, what are the qualifications for an airline pilot? What are the qualifications for an LFI? Thank you. And get in touch. Get 
same crush. It means to continue with someone by using a phone or writing to them. For example, I would need to get in touch with them. I would need to get in touch with them. Thank you. And be taken care of. Be taken care of. It means to deal with something. For example, all the travel arrangements have been taken care of. All the travel arrangements have been taken care of. So that's one. Invoice. Invoice. It means a list of goods sent or services provided with a statement of the sum due for this. For example, we will negotiate the term and send you an invoice. We will, we will negotiate the term and send you an invoice. Thank you. And now, Pei and I are going to have a conversation from scenario one. This is BNT International. How may I help you? Yes, I'm looking to book an interpreter for my company's meeting. Sure. May I have more detail, please? We will be expecting guests from Italy and France. This meeting will be held in English. Does that mean you need interpreters for both Italian and French? Actually, I have French taken care of. We will need an interpreter for Italian. Certainly. What is the place and duration of the meeting and do you have a budget? It will be held at the Crown Hotel downtown and we can pay $200 for a full day's work. And would you prefer an interpreter with a particular field of expertise? It would be better if our interpreter knew a thing or two about tourism. I see. We will look for a local interpreter for you first. If, you, if we cannot find one, would you be willing to cover the travel expenses? We would prefer someone from the area as for travel expenses. It depends on how much it comes to. I understand. Well, we do have some candidates with the necessary qualifications, but I will need to get in touch with them. Can I have your contact information, please? Oh, yes. I'm calling from Case Global. Last name, Robson. All right, Mr. Robson. We will contact the suitable candidates and then help you set up an interview with them. That would be great. And once you have decided on one, we will negotiate the terms and send you an invoice. Okay, please contact me as soon as you find someone. I will email you or our mail address too. All right, thank you for your call. Now I'll give the floor to pay you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. It's pay you again. Now I. But after the conversation one, we're going to do some preposition practice to test you if you got you were looking at the context carefully. Now first one, we will be expecting guests something Italy and France. Jiaqi from we will be expecting guests from Italy and France. Correct. Number two, the meeting will be held English. Wilson. The meeting will be held in English. Yay! Very good. The meeting will be held in English. Number three, does that mean you need interpreters, both Italian and French? Who wants to answer? Jia Yun. So, yes, four. Does that mean you need interpreters for both Italian and French? Number four. What is the place and duration of the meeting? And do you have a budget? I want to answer number four. Wilson again. Yes. Yes, correct. What is the place and duration of the meeting? And you have a budget. Number five. 
It will be held the Crown Hotel downtown. Yes. Yushin? Yes! It will be held at the Crown Hotel downtown. Number six. Would, would you prefer an interpreter a particular field of expertise? Who wants to answer number six? Yes? With. Correct. Would you prefer an interpreter with a particular field of expertise? That's right. Number seven. It would be better if our interpreter knew a thing or two blah, 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 tourism. Jaden. About. About. Yes, that's right. It, it would be better if our interpreter knew a thing or two about tourism. Number eight. We will be look something a local interpreter for you first. Come on, last two chance. Yes? Four, yes, we will look for local interpreter for you first. Last one, last chance to win a candy. Yes, Vincent? Thank you for your call. Yes, thank you for your call. And that's all of the preposition practice. You guys did a well job. Now we're going to do the discussion question, and I will give the floor to Da Yuan. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Li Dai, and in this part, I will discuss two questions with you. And if you know the answer, please don't be shy to raise your hand. First one: What are some key elements that may be needed on a checklist for a meeting? Does anyone know the answer? Thank you. Uh, meeting agenda uh, and the uh, attendance rate. Okay, that's right. And let's do it. Okay, with six, al six elements. First one, the attendance list. Second, meeting information. And third, meeting room. Fourth, meeting agenda. And technical equipment. And last one, refreshment. Okay, next question. What steps can one take to ensure that a meeting runs as smoothly as possible? Does anyone know the answer? Okay, Chai Yu. Okay, that's right. And we need four steps. Okay, first one, inform attendees of the okay. meeting attendees of the meeting time in advance. That can let attendees 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 plan <laughs> their itinerary in advance and attend a meeting on time. And second, distribute agenda and provide supporting material in time. That can let attendees attendees <laughs> clearly understand the meeting process and the content of the discussion. And Next one, make sure the equipment is ready. The equipment must be checked before the meeting starts, like computer, microphone, or projector. And last one, make sure electronic device turn off. During the meeting, if they have any sounds, it will affect or interrupt the speaker on the stand. So this is the end of discussion question. And now I'll give the floor to Pei Yu. Hi, we are going to do some activity about the meeting. Before the activity start, I would like to talk more about interpreter. Do you have any idea what interpreter is? Can someone answer me or give me some idea? Yes, Jaden. Translator. Translator, okay, that's good, but translator is a little bit more too general. Interpreter is actually, uh, the International Associate of Conference Interpreters says that the interpreter is actually the practice, interpreting is actually the practice of conveying the meaning of speaker's message orally and in other language to listeners who would not otherwise understand. So interpreter is more like speaking and translating. And there's a uh, different kinds of interpreters, but in gen here we we'll, we we'll only talk about it in general. 
So the activity here that we were, ta we were talking about is that why is interpreter important in an in international meeting? Because in an international meeting, interpreters need to know, yes, a thing or two about a li linguistic difference and ba uh, different cultural backgrounds. That is very important. So we have two contexts, and I chose four countries for the for this activity. First one, it will be Japanese people and French people. And the second one will be Indian and German. Why these four countries? Because we all know that, uh, we, we, we all know high and low contest culture, right? For the past four weeks. So, uh, Japanese is, a, is an ex extreme high contest culture and French, they are extreme low contest culture. And also Indian is high and oh, Indian is high and German is low. So these are the an international meeting between a Japanese company and a French company of a of a, for a business deal. What are the special requests will a interpreter needs to uh, clarify or explain? For example, like formal and ritual, as we all know that because well Japanese culture is a little bit uh, everywhere in Taiwan and we were colonized by Japanese people before. So we all know Japanese people care about formal and ritual, like the courtesy. And also for position and status, expressions like yes or no. And these uh, back to expression, I have to talk about something. Uh, when in Chinese, there's a language barrier. Chinese, when we ask a question like, aren't you, uh, aren't you going to the lunch with me? In Chinese, we will say, ah, oh, yes, it means no. But in <laughs> other languages, like French languages, it is no means no, yes means yes. So the interpreter needs to clarify that. And the second one, Indian company and German company. German. The stereotype of German people, they are what? Can you give me a thing or two? The stereotype of German people when it comes to Germany. Do you have an idea? Okay, I will tell you. German people are very straightforward and they are tend to be, uh, they care about the structure. They don't want to waste time. So, when in an international meeting, Germans are brilliant about structure, while Indian culture has endless creative, creative possibilities. That is why um, Indians, uh, they care about create creativities, but German, they only care about like concise structure during a meeting or when they are doing business. And also, German people, when they're working, they are working, but after work, that is their personal life. So you don't, you don't want to talk about work after work with German people, but Indian, they tend to mix them together. So that the interpreter needs to clarify that and tell Indian people that not to like, bother them after work or after this meeting. This is why interpreters are very important during an international meeting. Now, I'm going to give the floor to Dayan to talk about some more high and low campus culture. Okay, it's me again. And I believe I've entered to make everyone know high and low country culture. And it, I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about the educational environment and I will use Taiwan in America as an example. And I have learned three points for a comparison. <coughs> First one, teaching math. In Taiwan, we, 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 are, we were required to recite a textbook from childhood. But through learning reduced our creativity and thinking ability. And in America, we are using a way of exploration to stimulate children's imagination and creativity. And I think letting children to explore by themselves is an effective way to learn. And second one, <coughs> in Taiwan, many students are quiet in a class. 
like me, I fill them with my hand to ask questions in a class. And I'm sure many people understand. But in America, they are asking questions in a class proactively. They will ask questions in a class anytime. And I think maybe having more conversations can improve the spirit of the class and learning can also be better. Okay. Last one, relationship. In Taiwan, we are taught to respect teacher from childhood. And that also because of authority and age difference between teacher and student. But this will make students keeping distance from the teacher. And in America, teacher and student like friends. And they, but they are still respectful. And so students discussing a question with teacher do not need to be afraid or, or nervous to disturb it. And also, students call teacher by their names. And I think this method can quickly shorten the, the shorten the distance between teacher and student. So there are three differences between in the educational environment between high and low country culture. As you can see, the educational in high country high country culture is inflexible, and in low country culture is flexible. And students in high country culture is passive, and in low country culture is proactive. And the relationship in high country culture is distant, and in low country culture is close. So this is the end of the high and low country culture. And that's one conclusion. We have warming up on page 16 and scenario one on page 16 to 17. Discussion question on page 19. Activity one on page 20. Okay, inside story. We have first meeting and we have job assignment and preview the content of textbook in this classroom, 3409 on September 26. And this is our live group discussion. Okay, live group discussion. We share our progress and do the PowerPoint online on October 9th. And rehearsal. <laughs> we, we rehearse in this classroom, 3409 on October 13th and 14th. Okay, job assignment. This is our job assignment. We did PowerPoint together and Peru is in charge of preposition practice activity one and scenario one. And I'm in charge of discussion question, high and low content, high and low content culture. And Penny is in charge of warming up vocabulary and scenario one. Uh, references. This is our references. Okay, now is our is the break time. We will have the break time from. 3.50 to 4, let's say, 4.15. Just tell them, please come back at. Please come back at 4.15. Okay. Let's take a break. Let's take a break.